Hi there. Um, today, I'm going to talk um, a little bit about um, more details on consulting and how you figure out pricing. Um, I know that uh, that in my last uh, video about this, I said that you don't want to price by the hour, but you do need to be aware of what you are roughly getting paid per hour because you're going to want to have some kind of threshold. And if you constantly find yourself um, not hitting that threshold, then maybe you're spending too long on things where you're underpricing yourself, um, which is valuable information to have. But um, for those of you who may um, may not be in uh, in and already in a consulting um, field where you're getting um, billed out in an hourly rate, um, what what employers do is is they know what it costs to have you as an employee, and that includes the taxes that they pay you, the um, or that they pay on your behalf, um, your any benefits that they're paying for you, your vacation time, your um, you know, workers' comp, the building that you work in, the electricity for the building that you work in, email, tech, all of that stuff um, gets lumped into overhead. Plus, then they want to make a profit on you. They're not just paying you your salary plus overhead. I mean, they're in business to make a profit. So they tack on that to, to you when they're billing your time out, if they bill your time out. So like when I was an engineer, um, depending on what stage of engineering I was in, I was billed out at anywhere from like $100 an hour to almost $200 an hour. I was not making $100 an hour or $200 an hour um, on my paycheck, but that that value of that they were charging their clients was based on my salary plus all of the overhead plus profit. Um, but when you take out the profit and you look at just a salary, so um, I'm, I'm going to use $1,000 a week just because it's the math is simpler and, and I don't want to get really detailed into the math. But roughly, if you're making $1,000 a week, you're probably taking home about 750 because after taxes, social security, Medicare, and maybe like whatever contribution you have to make to your health insurance, it's somewhere in that neighborhood. So what you're taking home from that thousand dollars, what your employer is paying you or paying for you from that thousand dollars is they're giving you a thousand dollars, but they are also paying um, between 25 and 40% more than that on the taxes that they pay on your behalf on all of the overhead that we just talked about. Um, so, and, and any of the benefits. So all of that stuff is value. So they might be paying up to um, $1,400 a week to have you as an employee. You're getting $1,000 of that. You're taking home less than that. So when once you start, if you start consulting, um, you're going to be responsible for all of those, those, those taxes and overhead. Now your overhead is probably going to be low. I mean, if you're not renting an, a space and you're in your home and, you know, you maybe need some equipment, but your overhead is going to be lower than a big business that has a lot of um, property to manage. <clears throat> so, but so, but you do want to take that into account. Um, that would include any equipment that you need to buy over the course of a year or any subscriptions that you need. But um, you also need to include the fact that you would then be paying all of the taxes and contributions on your behalf because the employer won't be doing that for you. So the mistake would be is, is to say, OK, like I bring home $750 an hour and that works out to, I don't know, uh, what did I, I did a quick napkin thing that works out to over 40 hours, like $19 an hour, roughly. I just need to charge $19 an hour and that's a great deal. Well, yeah, then you're going to be, you're going to really be missing out. Even if you charge uh, $1,000 a week for your services to one person for 40 hours a week, you're still going to be missing out because your, your tax rate is going to be different. Then this is something you should talk to someone about. But these are things you need to think about when you're pricing your services, because ultimately you want to figure out what is the bare minimum that you need to make based on how much you want to work. Um, and you might not want to work 40 hours. You might want to work, um, you know, 30 hours because that's what fits with your kid's school schedule. What does that translate to? So you have to add up all of your overhead and the amount of money you need to actually take home and divide that out and come up with an hourly rate. And that is your floor. Now, that's not a rate that you give to people, but you figure out what that is. Like, I need to be averaging at least... X number of dollars, say it's $100 an hour, take home or um, or I need I need $100 an hour to live. But by the time I add in my overhead, 
and all of that other stuff that works out to be $170 an, an hour that I need to be making at a minimum to cover all of my overhead and then still have a, an amount to live on. So then you need to make sure that what you're pricing, if you know something is going to take you about four hours and it's, you know, and you need to make almost $200 in that four hours, each hour in that four hours, um, I guess I should just say with the overhead, maybe it's $200 to keep this math simple because I'm really talking more conceptual than, than actual dollars and cents here. So if you're, you need $100 an hour and to get to that value, you need to make $200 and it's something that's probably going to take you four hours to do, you should charge at least $800 for that. Um, if you charge $600 for it and it's, you know, it's going to take you four hours, you're already losing out. But if you also know the value of that thing that you're providing, your deliverable is um, is $1,000, you can charge $1,000, then you have a little bit of flexibility in time, and you're going to make more profit on that job. So it's just, you want to know what your floor is just to make sure that you're using your time wisely and you're not undervaluing your services that you're providing. Um, and then let's talk about that, the idea of a deliverable. Because I touched on this on the last video about how some clients um, or potential clients will want to know your hourly rate and how many hours are you giving them for whatever they're paying you. And that is I is not a way that I like to do business. And it's not a way that I encourage people to do it because um, because it's, it, it's, it's when you are consulting and creating things for your clients, there's not a set time frame. You don't really know how long something is going to take. And on the one hand, it does make sense. You're like, okay, well, if I spend X hours on this, I should get paid for those hours. But then you're limited because again, you only have so many hours. And once you've exhausted those hours, you've limited the amount of, you've capped the amount of money that you can make, which is ridiculous because the more you do and the more you learn and the more um, experience you get, the more value what you have um, to share is. And so why would you want to cap that? I mean, you could keep raising your hourly rates, but at some point that that time for money is just not, it's not worth it. And you're going to want to um, not have to work. Plus you it, like, this is just me. I hate keeping track of my time. Um, I do it, like I said, very loosely to keep make to make sure that I'm not um, undervaluing what I'm doing or that I'm not spending too much time on something or I, I miss, you know, I misestimated something, but actually keeping track of hours and billing based on those hours. I is like what I absolutely hated about um, working in engineering fields where I had to mark my time and bill it to different projects. It was just like my least favorite thing to do. So Take that with a great, like that might be something that you really, you really like doing and, and it works for you, but it's, it's a better model to charge for the value of what you do. And as you get more experience and help more people, that value just increases and, um, and, and you also get faster. And so why should you be penalized for being able to do something more quickly? Because you've earned the experience. There are a couple of anecdotes out there. One is, um, I think about Picasso. Um, he was doodling on a napkin and was just going to throw it out. And then someone who saw him asked if if they could have it. And he was like, sure, you know, $5 million. And they were like, but you were going to throw it out. He's like, yeah, but but if you want it, like this, this took me a long time to be able to just doodle this and have it be worth something. And then I think there's another joke or something about, um, I think it was a ship um, that that was was not working and they couldn't uh, like a, an army ship or something and they, nobody could figure out how to do it and they brought someone in and he spent a couple minutes looking at the ship and you know testing things out and then he like fixed one thing and then charged them you know ten thousand dollars and they're like but you were here for five minutes and he's like yeah but knowing what to do in those five minutes took me years to to get to and so there's value in in that time that you've spent learning your craft or service. And so that's why it's a better model to price on deliverables because think about think about your typical week. How much time is wasted um in pointless stuff? Like if you stripped out all of the unnecessary meetings and other things that you needed to do um just as part of a corporate culture and could just focus on the things that you are supposed to deliver. 
how much time would it actually take you to get those done? I bet not a lot of time compared to the 40 hours of week a week at least that you have to be in the office. So if you can get that deliverable done, and that is what the company needs, and you can offer them that deliverable for a fraction of what they are pay, would need to pay a full-time person, um, and, and you know, so they win because they're paying less for the same thing than they would have to if it was a full-time person, and you win because you can charge them for the value of that, and you know, maybe it takes you 10 hours to do, and it would take you 40 hours in any corporate culture because you've got so many other things pulling you in different directions and you can't focus on anything. So it's that the value of that deliverable may be more than they would spend on a per hour basis if you were a full-time employee, but it's still less than they have to pay for a full-time employee. And the value that you are getting is the value of your experience and you are making more in less time than you are working when then you're doing otherwise at um at wherever you may be working now. And I know that was a lot. And I know I kind of jumped around between value and, and dollars and then um getting jumping back onto deliverables. So if you have any questions about it, because this is an important thing to understand if you're thinking about going into your own business is how to value your product or your deliverable and your time and to make sure that you are not undervaluing yourself. Um, and recognizing that that you are still providing a great value to the clients or potential clients that you approach, um, that is really, really important. And um, so I'll talk about that some more in some different ways over the next um, over, you know, in some future videos. But but if you have any questions about what I've explained, um, I really need to figure out a way to do this with some visuals or like, you know, something on the screen. It's like someone who's more techie than I can could like put it up there on the side in words that make it a little bit easier to follow. Um, but again, it's really important. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And, uh, and I'll touch on this again in future videos, like I said, and maybe try to think of other ways to present it for those of us who don't think as well in numbers and, um, and dollar signs. Um, anyway, that's it for now. I hope you all have a good day and thanks for watching.